Thermo, part three, change of phase. Describe how evaporation affects a liquid's temperature. Describe how condensation affects temperature. Explain how evaporation and condensation can take place at the same time. Describe how pressure affects boiling points. Describe the effect of dissolving anything in a liquid on the liquid's freezing temperature. Describe how something can boil and freeze at the same time. Explain why so few substances undergo regulation. Explain the relationship between energy and phase change. The big idea. Changes of phase involve a transfer of energy. The four possible forms of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, are called phases. Matter can change from one phase, or state, as it is also sometimes called, to another. Ice, for example, is the solid phase of H2O. And here's a glacier in the picture. Add energy and the rigid molecular structure breaks down to the liquid phase, water. Add more energy and the liquid changes to the gaseous phase as the water boils to become steam. The phase of matter changes on its temperature and the pressure that is exerted upon it. Changes of phase involve a transfer of energy. This is a triple point diagram and it shows the relationship between pressure and temperature of water. How do clouds form? Cover the bottom of a gallon jar with a thin layer of water. Drop a lit match into the jar. Quickly place the fingers of a rubber glove inside the jar and stretched the open end of the glove over the jar's mouth. Put your fingers in the glove and quickly pull the glove out of the jar. Analyze and conclude, observing. What did you observe when you pulled the gloves out of the jar? Predicting, what do you suppose would happen if you were to pull the glove out of the jar more slowly? Making generalizations, what factors are necessary for cloud formation? Evaporation, 23-1. Water in an open container will eventually evaporate or dry up. The liquid that disappears becomes water vapor in the air. Evaporation is a change of phase from liquid to gas that takes place at the surface of a liquid. The temperature of anything is related to the average kinetic energy of its molecules. Molecules in a liquid phase continuously move about in all directions and bump into one another at different speeds. Some of the molecules gain kinetic energy while others lose kinetic energy. Those molecules at the surface of the liquid that gain kinetic energy by being bumped from below may have enough energy to break free of the liquid. They can leave the surface and fly into space above the liquid. They now comprise a vapor, molecules in the gaseous phase. The increased kinetic energy of molecules bumped free of the liquid comes from molecules remaining in the liquid. This is billiard ball physics. When balls bump into one another and some gain kinetic energy, the other balls lose the same amount of kinetic energy. So the average kinetic energy of the molecules remaining behind in the liquid is lowered. Evaporation is a process that cools the liquid left behind. A canteen such as the one in figure 23-1 keeps cool by evaporation when the cloth covering the sides is kept wet as the fast moving water molecules leave the cloth. The temperature of the cloth decreases. Figure 23.1, the cloth covering on the sides of the canteen promotes cooling when it is wet. The cool cloth in turn cools the metal canteen by conduction which in turn cools the water inside. When the human body overheats, sweat glands produce perspiration. As the sweat evaporates, it cools us and helps us maintain a stable body temperature. 
animals that lack sweat glands, such as the pig in figure 23.2, must cool themselves in other ways. For example, dogs cool themselves by panting. Concept check. How does evaporation affect a liquid's temperature? 23.2. Pigs lack sweat glands. They wallow in mud to cool themselves. 23.2. Condensation. The process opposite to evaporation cools is condensation warms. Condensation is the changing of a gas to a liquid. The formation of droplets of water on the outside of a soda can is an example. Water vapor molecules collide with the slower moving molecules of the cold can surface. The vapor molecules give up so much kinetic energy that they can't stay in the gaseous phase. They condense. Condensation also occurs when gas molecules are captured by liquids. In their random motion, gas molecules may hit a liquid and lose kinetic energy. The attractive forces exerted on them by the liquid may hold them. Gas molecules become liquid molecules. Condensation warms the area where the liquid forms. Kinetic energy lost by condensing gas molecules warms the surface they strike. A steam burn, for example, is more damaging than a burn from boiling water of the same temperature. Steam gives up energy when it condenses to the liquid that wets the skin. The radiator in figure 23.3 also works by condensation of steam. Notes, a camel's best source of water is its oversized nose with an inside structure that recaptures most of the moisture in water-saturated air coming from its lungs. So it withholds water from its own exhaled breath. 23.3, heat is given up by steam when it condenses inside the radiator. It's an old radiator. The effects of condensation can be seen in the atmosphere. The air always contains some water vapor. This water vapor can make the air feel humid, or it can lead to the formation of fog and clouds. Relative humidity. At any given temperature and pressure, there is a limit to the amount of water vapor in the air. When any substance contains the maximum amount of another substance, the first substance is saturated. The ratio of how much water vapor is in the air to the maximum amount that could be in the air at the same temperature is the relative humidity. Relative humidity is not a measure of how much water vapor is in the air. On a hot day with a low relative humidity, there may be more water vapor in the air than on a cold day with high relative humidity. Is it correct to say that relative humidity is a measure of the amount of water vapor in the air at a particular temperature? Explain. No. Humidity is a measure of the amount of water vapor per volume of air, whatever the temperature. Relative humidity, on the other hand, is the amount of vapor in the air compared with the amount for saturation at a particular temperature. Relative humidity is a ratio expressed as a percent. Air with 60% of vapor contained by saturated air at the same temperature has a relative humidity of 60%. At a relative humidity of 100%, the air is saturated. More water vapor is required to saturate high temperature air than low temperature air. The warm air of tropical regions is capable of containing much more moisture than cold arctic air. For saturation there must be water vapor molecules in the air undergoing condensation. When slow moving molecules collide some stick together. They condense. To understand this think of a fly making grazing contact with fly paper. At low speed it would 
surely gets stuck, whereas at high speed, it is more able to rebound into the air. Similarly, when water vapor molecules collide, they are more likely to stick together and become part of a liquid if they are moving slowly, as shown in figure 23.4. Figure 23.4a, at high speeds, molecules of water vapor bounce apart and remain a gas. B, at lower speeds, molecules of water vapor are more likely to stick together and form a liquid. At higher speeds, they can bounce apart and remain in the gaseous phase. Although condensation in the air occurs more readily at low temperatures, it can occur at high temperatures also. Recall that temperature is a measure of kinetic energy, of average kinetic energy. There are always some molecules moving faster than average and some moving slower. Even at high temperature, there will be enough slow molecules to cause condensation, provided there is enough water vapor present. Whatever the temperature, it is the slower molecules that are more likely to stick. Fogs and clouds. Warm air rises. As it rises, it expands. As it expands, it cools. As it cools, water vapor molecules begin sticking together after colliding rather than bouncing off one another. If there are larger and slower moving particles or ions present, water vapor condenses upon these particles and we have a cloud. Fog is basically a cloud that forms near the ground. Flying through a cloud is much like driving through fog. Notes. Cloud formation can be simulated by seeding the air with appropriate particles or ions. Fog occurs in areas where moist air near the ground cools. For example, moist air that has blown in from over an ocean or lake may pass over cooler land. Some of the water vapor condenses out of the air as it cools, and we have fog. A key feature of fog and cloud formation is a slowing down of water vapor molecules in air. Concept check. How does condensation affect temperature? 23.3 Evaporation and Condensation Rates When you emerge from a shower into a dry room, you often feel chilly because evaporation is taking place quickly. If you stay in the shower stall, you will not feel as chilly. When you are in a moist environment, moisture from the air condenses on your skin and warms you, counteracting the cooling of evaporation. If as much moisture condenses as evaporates, you will feel no change in body temperature. That's why you are more comfortable if you stay in the stall. If you leave a covered dish for days and no apparent evaporation takes place, you might conclude that nothing is happening. You'd be mistaken, for much activity is taking place at the molecular level. Evaporation and condensation occur continuously at equal rates. 23.5, if you feel chilly outside the shower stall, step back inside and be warmed by the condensation of the excess water vapor there. The molecules and energy leaving a liquid surface by evaporation can be counteracted by as many molecules and as much energy returning by condensation. The water level doesn't change because evaporation and condensation have canceling effects. Evaporation and condensation normally take place at the same time. If evaporation exceeds condensation, the liquid is cooled. If condensation exceeds evaporation, the liquid is warm. How can evaporation and condensation take place at the same time? 23.4. Boiling. Evaporation takes place at the surface of the liquid. A change of phase forms liquid to gas. 
can also take place beneath the surface of the liquid, causing bubbles. The bubbles are buoyed upward to the surface where they escape into the surrounding air. The change of phase from liquid to gas beneath the liquid surface is called boiling. The pressure of the vapor within the bubbles in the boiling liquid must be great enough to resist the pressure of the surrounding water. Unless the vapor pressure is great enough, the surrounding pressures will collapse any bubbles that it may form. At temperatures below the boiling point, the vapor pressure is not great enough. Bubbles do not form until the boiling point is reached. Can you see steam? 1. Bring a tea kettle full of water to a boil and watch the spout. Where do you see the cloud form? Hold a lighted candle in the cloud of condensed steam. What do you see? Think. What does the heat from the flame do to the condensed steam? Think. Since boiling is a cooling process, would it be a good idea to cool your hot, sticky hands by dipping them into boiling water? Explain. No, no, no. When we say boiling is a cooling process, we mean that the water, not your hands, is being cooled. A dip in 100 degree water would be most uncomfortable for your hands. As the atmospheric pressure is increased, the molecules in the vapor are required to move faster, to exert increased pressure within the bubbles in order to counteract the additional atmospheric pressure. Increasing the pressure on the surface of the liquid raises the boiling point of the liquid. Conversely, lowered pressure as at high altitudes decreases the boiling point. Thus, boiling depends not only on the temperature, but the pressure also. 23.6. The motion of molecules in the bubble of steam, much enlarged, creates a gas pressure that counteracts the water pressure against the bubble. High pressure. A pressure cooker is based on this fact. A pressure cooker has a tight-fitting lid that does not allow vapor to escape until it reaches a certain pressure greater than normal air pressure. As the evaporating vapor builds up inside the sealed pressure cooker, pressure on the surface of the liquid is increased, which prevents boiling. A pressure cooker reaches a higher temperature because the increased pressure forces the water to reach a higher temperature before boiling can occur. The increased temperature of the water cooks the food faster. Low pressure. It is important to note that it is the high temperature of the water that cooks the food, not the boiling process itself. At high altitudes, water boils at a lower temperature. In Denver, Colorado, the mile-high city, for example, water boils at 95 degrees Celsius instead of 100 degrees Celsius. Boiling temperature characteristic of sea level. If you try to cook food in boiling water at a lower temperature, you might wait a longer time for proper cooking. A three-minute boiled egg in Denver is runny. If the temperature of the boiling water were very low, food would not cook at all. Boiling, like evaporation, is a process that cools the liquid left behind. Heating water is one thing. Boiling is another. When 100 degree Celsius water at atmospheric pressure is boiling, heat is taken away as fast as it is added. Figure 23.7 shows the water is being cooled by boiling as fast as it is being heated by energy from the heat source. If cooling did not take place, continued application of heat to the pot of boiling water would result in a continued increase in temperature. Concept check. What is the effect of pressure on the boiling temperature of a liquid? 
23.7, heating and boiling are two distinct processes. Heating warms the water and boiling cools it. 23.5, freezing. When energy is continually withdrawn from a liquid, molecular motion slows until the forces of attraction between the molecules cause them to get closer to one another. The molecules then vibrate about fixed positions and form a solid. Water provides a good example of this process. When energy is extracted from water at a temperature of zero degrees Celsius and at atmospheric pressure, ice is formed. The liquid water gives way to the solid ice phase. The change in phase from liquid to solid is called freezing. Figure 23A shows the open six-sided structure of an ice crystal. Interestingly enough, if sugar or salt is dissolved in the water, the freezing temperature will be lowered. Figure 23A, pure ice crystals have an open hexagonal structure. These foreign molecules or ions get in the way of water molecules that ordinarily would join together. As ice crystals do form, the hindrance is intensified for the proportion of foreign molecules or ions among liquid water molecules that remain increases. Connections become more difficult. In general, dissolving anything in a liquid lowers the liquid's freezing temperature. Antifreeze in an automobile engine is a practical application of this process. Putting salt on the roads. Sodium chloride works. For every particle of sodium chloride, you get two ions, sodium and chlorine. Calcium chloride, CaCl3, you get three ions. So calcium chloride will lower the freezing point even more. Notes, although streams can freeze over in cold weather, most often they don't. Why? Because streams are usually fed with warmer groundwater. Concept check. What effect does dissolving anything in a liquid have on the liquid's freezing temperature? 23.6, boiling and freezing at the same time. Suppose that a dish of water at room temperature is placed in a vacuum jar, as shown in figure 23.9. If the pressure in the jar is slowly reduced by a vacuum pump, the vapor pressure on the molecules within the water will be high enough to form bubbles, and the water will start to boil. The boiling process takes higher energy molecules away from the water left in the dish which cools to a lower temperature. As the pressure is further reduced, more and more of the faster remaining slow-moving molecules boil away. Continued boiling results in a lowering of temperature until the freezing point of approximately zero degrees Celsius is reached. Continued cooling by boiling causes ice to form over the surface of the bubbling water. 23.9, the apparatus shown can be used to demonstrate that water will freeze and boil at the same time in a vacuum. A gram or two of water is placed in a dish that is insulated from the base by a polystyrene cup. Lowering the pressure can cause boiling and freezing to take place at the same time. This must be witnessed to be appreciated. Frozen bubbles of boiling water are a remarkable sight. If some drops of coffee are sprayed into the vacuum chamber, they too will boil until they freeze. Even after they are frozen, the water molecules will continue to evaporate until little crystals of coffee solids are left. This is how freeze dried coffee is made. The low temperature of this process tends to 
keep the chemical structure of coffee solids from changing. When hot water is added, much of the original flavor of the coffee is preserved. Concept check. What can cause boiling and freezing to take place at the same time? 23.7. Regulation. The open structured crystals of ice can be crushed by the application of pressure, whereas ice normally melts at zero degrees Celsius, the application of pressure lowers the melting point. The crystals are simply crushed to the liquid phase. At twice standard atmospheric pressure, the melting point is lowered to negative 0 0.007 degrees Celsius. Quite a bit more pressure must be applied for an observable effect. When the pressure is removed, refreezing occurs. The phenomena of melting under pressure and freezing again when the pressure is reduced is called regulation. It is one of the properties of water that makes it different from other substances. Regulation can occur only in substances that expand when they freeze. You can see regulation if you suspend a fine wire that supports heavy weights over a block of ice, as shown in figure 2310. The wire will slowly cut its way through the ice, but its track will refill with ice. You will see the wire and the weights fall to the floor, leaving the ice in a single solid piece. To make a snowball, you use regulation. When you compress the snow, you cause a slight melting, which helps to bind the snow into a ball. Making snowballs is difficult in very cold weather because the pressure you can apply may not be enough to melt the snow. 2310, regulation allows the wire to cut through the ice, but leaves the ice in a single solid piece. Once it was thought that an ice skate's pressure lowered the freezing point of ice. Now we know that this is not sufficient to explain ice skating. Ice has a thin layer of liquid on its surface, even at very low temperatures. Concept check. Why do so few substances undergo regulation? The egg test, physics in the kitchen. Physics can help with even the simplest of all cooked creations, the boiled egg. Test the egg for freshness by placing it in water. If it sinks and lies on its side, it's fresh. If it floats, it's rotten. An egg loses density as it ages because it loses moisture through pores in its shell, eventually becoming less dense than water. To test that the egg is raw, spin it on a tabletop. If it wobbles, it's uncooked. The wobbling indicates that the yolk is moving within the egg thus changing the egg center of gravity. Eggs sometimes crack while boiling due to an air pocket inside. With heat, the air pressure in the pocket increases enough to crack the shell. If you carefully pierce the egg's big end with a small, clean pin before boiling, it won't crack. Finally, be sure you actually boil the water. You can heat an egg indefinitely at lower temperatures, but it doesn't cook. Cooking requires exceeding a threshold temperature so that the long stranded molecules of the egg become cross-linked. That's why an egg won't cook by boiling at very high altitudes. The boiling water is not enough to cook the egg. The basic egg.
23.8, energy and changes of phase. If you heat a solid sufficiently, it will melt and become a liquid. If you heat the liquid, it will vaporize and become a gas. Energy must be put into the substance to change its phase from solid to liquid to gas. Conversely, energy must be extracted from a substance to change its phase from gas to liquid to solid. Figure 2311 shows the flow of energy. Notes. Heat of fusion is either the energy needed to separate molecules from the solid phase or the energy released when bonds form in a liquid and change it to a solid phase. 2311, the change in the internal energy of a substance causes the change of phase. Examples of phase changes. The general behavior of many substances can be illustrated with a description of the changes of phase of H2O. To make the numbers simple, Suppose we have a one gram piece of ice at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius in a closed container and it is put on a stove to heat. A thermometer in the container reveals a slow increase in temperature up to zero degrees Celsius. It takes about a half of a calorie to raise the temperature of a gram of ice from one degree Celsius. Once it reaches zero degrees Celsius, the temperature of the ice remains at zero degrees Celsius even though heat input continues. Rather than getting warmer, the ice melts. In order for the whole gram of ice to melt, 80 calories, 335 joules of heat energy must be absorbed by the ice. Not until all the ice melts does the temperature again begin to rise. Think, how much energy is released when a gram of steam at 100 degrees Celsius condenses to water at 100 degrees Celsius? One gram of steam at 100 degrees Celsius releases 540 calories of energy when it condenses to become water at the same temperature. Each additional calorie absorbed by the gram of water increases its temperature by one degree Celsius until it reaches its boiling temperature 100 degrees Celsius. Again, as heat is added, the temperature remains constant while more of the gram of water is boiled away and becomes steam. The water must absorb 540 calories, 2,255 joules of heat to vaporize the whole gram. Finally, when all the water has become steam at 100 degrees Celsius, the temperature begins to rise once more. It continues to rise as long as heat is added, again taking about a half a calorie per gram for each degree Celsius rise in temperature. This process is shown graphed in figure 2312. Reversibility of phase changes. The phase change sequence is reversible. Figure 2312. The graph shows the energy involved in the heating and the change of phase of one gram of H2O. When the molecules in a gram of steam condense to form boiling water, they liberate 540 calories. 2,255 joules of heat to the environment. When the water is cooled from 100 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius, 100 additional calories are liberated to the environment. When ice water fuses to become solid ice, 80 more calories or 335 joules of energy are released by the water. The 540 calories, 2,200 55 joules required to vaporize a gram of water is a relatively large amount of energy, much more than is required to change a gram of ice at absolute zero 
to boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius. Although the molecules in steam and boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius have the same average kinetic energy, steam has more potential energy because the molecules are free of each other and are not bound together in the liquid. When H2O in the vapor phase condenses, is the surrounding air warmed or cooled? The surrounding air is warm because the change of phase is from vapor to liquid, which releases energy. Steam contains a vast amount of energy that can be released during condensation. The largest value of 540 calories per gram explains why, under some conditions, hot water will freeze faster than warm water. This occurs for water hotter than 80 degrees Celsius. It is evident when the surface area that cools by rapid evaporation is large compared with the amount of water involved. Examples are a car wash with hot water on a cold winter's day and an ice skating rink flooded with hot water to melt and smooth out the rough spots and refreeze quickly. Notes. Water, water's heat of vaporization is huge. The energy needed to vaporize a quantity of boiling water is nearly seven times the energy needed to melt the same amount of ice. 2313. When a car is washed on a cold day, hot water will freeze more readily than warm water because of the energy that the rapidly evaporating water takes with it. The rate of cooling by rapid evaporation is very high because each gram of water that evaporates draws at least 540 calories from the water left behind. This is an enormous quantity of energy compared with the one calorie per Celsius degree that is drawn for each gram of water that cools by thermal conduction. Evaporation truly is a cooling process. Applications of phase changes. A refrigerator's cooling cycle is a good example of the energy interchanges that occur with the changes of phase of the refrigeration fluid, not water. The liquid is pumped into the cooling unit where it is forced through a tiny opening to evaporate and draw heat from the thing stored in the food compartment. The gas is then directed outside the cooling unit to coils located in the back. As the gas condenses in the coils, appropriately called condensation coils, heat is given off to the surrounding air. The liquid returns to the cooling unit and the cycle continues. A motor pumps the fluid through the system where it enters the cyclic process of vaporization and condensation. The next time you're near a refrigerator, place your hand near the condensation coils in the back or the bottom and you will feel the heat that has been extracted from the inside. An air conditioner employs the same principle. It simply pumps heat from one part of the unit to the other. When the roles of vaporization and condensation are reversed, the air conditioner becomes a heater. A process that moves heat is called a heat pump. A way that some people judge the hotness of a clothes iron is to touch it briefly with a finger. 2314, the refrigeration cycle in a common refrigerator keeps the inside cool. This is also a way to burn your finger, unless it is first moistened. Energy that ordinarily would go into burning the finger goes instead into changing the phase of the moisture on it. The energy converts the moisture to a vapor, which additionally provides an insulating layer between the finger and the hot surface. Similarly, you may have seen news photos 
or heard stories about people walking barefoot without harm over red hot coals from firewood. Caution. Never try this on your own. Even experienced firewalkers have received bad burns when the conditions were not just right. The primary factor here is the low conductivity of wood, even red hot wood. Although its temperature is high, relatively little heat is conducted to the feet, just as little heat is conducted by air when you put your hand briefly into a hot pizza oven because air is a poor conductor. But if you touch the metal in the oven, ouch, notes. A refrigerator is a heat pump. It transfers heat out of a cold environment and into a warm environment. When the process is reversed, the heat pump is an air conditioner. It bo in both cases, external energy operates the device. Similarly, a firewalker who steps on a hot piece of metal or another good conductor will be burned. A secondary factor is skin moisture. Perspiration on the soles of your feet decreases heat transfer to the feet. Much of the heat that would go to the feet instead goes to vaporizing the moisture. Again, like touching a hot clothes iron with a wetted finger. Temperature is one thing, heat transfer is another. In brief, a solid absorbs energy when it melts. A liquid absorbs energy when it vaporizes. Conversely, a gas emits energy when it liquefies. A liquid releases energy when it solidifies. Concept check. How is energy related to phase changes? Physics on the job, firefighting. Firefighters regularly enter burning buildings to save lives and property. In order to perform their job effectively and safely, firefighters must be knowledgeable about the physics of heat. The most common fire control is dousing a flame with water. In some cases, a fine mist is more effective in quenching a fire. Why? Because the fine mist readily turns to steam and in so doing quickly absorbs energy and cools the burning material, properly dealing with flames saves lives, including their own. To firefighters, the physics of heat is much more than a classroom assignment. It's a matter of staying alive. Job opportunities exist for firefighters with cities or county fire departments and the National Forest Service. Summary, thermo part three, change of phase. Evaporation cools the liquid left behind. Condensation warms the area where the liquid forms. The molecules of energy leaving a liquid surface by evaporation can be counteracted by as many molecules and as much energy returning by condensation. Increasing the pressure on the surface of a liquid raises the boiling point of the liquid. In general, dissolving anything in a liquid lowers the liquid's freezing temperature. Lowering the pressure can cause boiling and freezing to take place at the same time. Regulation can occur only in substances that expand when they freeze. Energy must be put into the substance to change its phase from solid to liquid to gas. Conversely, energy must be extracted from a substance to change its phase from gas to liquid to solid.